This was a simple yet fun and rewarding project. There's nothing too complex about it. It's a live edge slab charcuterie board with a basic inlay. What was fun about this is that without a CNC, I likely would not have attempted it. Matter of fact, I picked up a couple of these slabs six or eight months prior to getting my CNC, just knowing they'd be a great project once I had one set up. So let's get into this and I'll explain how the CNC made this project so easy. I started with a two inch thick slab of pecan. It was approximately 18 inches long and 12 inches wide. You can see the slab was uneven and had some cracks that needed to be filled. First, I removed the bark to expose the clean wood on both edges. Once the rough work was done with a chisel, I used my Rotex sander to clean it up. One side had a large piece sticking out that seemed a little excessive, so I decided to trim it using the bandsaw. Next I had to flatten the slab. Although there are other ways to do this, the CNC is a great tool for the task. You can see here, I had not yet trimmed the ends of the slab, so the angle of the wood caused my clamps to lift the slab off the surface as I applied clamping pressure against my bench dogs. To solve this, I cut an angled piece of scrap to place between the clamp and the slab, and it stayed flat on the spoil board. I used white side solid carbide bits in this video. A link is provided in the description below. If nothing else, I'd encourage you to read the reviews on these bits, and regardless of the brand you buy, take into consideration that high quality bits make a huge difference in the cut quality you get with your CNC. I've received a few comments and questions about the noise of my spindle. Here you can tell the sound of the bit cutting the wood is much louder than the noise of the spindle, which is relatively quiet. Once both sides were flat, I taped the bottom of the board using tuck tape, which is just a construction grade sheathing tape to prevent epoxy from leaking out. Because the cracks were all concentrated in the center of the board, I made a little circular dam of hot glue to keep the epoxy where I wanted it. I used System 3 mirror cast epoxy and added System 3's black colorant as shown here. Once I worked it into the cracks, I hit it with a heat gun to remove the air bubbles. Off camera, I skimmed the epoxy off with the CNC, 
then sanded everything down to 150 grit. I decided I would do a Texas inlay using a piece of cherry. You may recognize this from my inlay practice video, which was a test of the very same file. You will notice a couple of minor things I need to adjust in this file in the future. The pass depth for the V-bit was set too shallow. I don't recall setting it that way, but I just let it run and it came out fine. I also need to go in and edit the vector file as there are way too many nodes which could be deleted. It didn't impact the final outcome of the inlay, but it caused the job to run a little longer than necessary. Here you see the female part of the V-carve inlay finishing up. Now the male piece, or the plug, is mirrored and cut out of a piece of cherry. Let me know if you'd like to see a detailed video of how I set up my files for an inlay like this. I've only done a couple of these inlays, but they come out great. This inlay is something else I likely would not have attempted without the CNC. The inlay was glued and clamped overnight. Then I used the CNC to remove the excess wood from the male piece and sanded everything to 180 grit. and then use Osmo's top oil to finish the piece. I like using Osmo not only for the ease of application, but it is a durable finish and I really like the feel it has once it's cured. I applied three coats with a white 3M pad. The first coat I applied a little more liberal than I normally would, but for some reason this pecan was really soaking it up.
the second and third coats are applied the same way. And you can see here, by the third coat, I use barely any oil at all. Final step was to add rubber feet to the board and it was complete. So I'm curious, what price would you put on this if it was yours? Or maybe I should ask, what would your spouse be willing to pay for this if you chose not to make one? Pricing of work is always a, a lively topic, so leave your thoughts in the comments below. As I said before, this was a simple yet enjoyable project. I was able to practice with the CNC and create something I may not have otherwise taken on, while at the same time making it unique with the Texas inlay. So that's it for now. I hope you can take these ideas and get out to your shop and get creative. 